What's up developers, it's Dari here and welcome back to a new video where we're going to dive into cache in Laravel. I recently started using my GitHub more and more and I was thinking about adding a repository for every video I create with a usage section at the bottom which will basically show you how to code works and text. If you are interested in this, let me know in the comments section down below so I can continue on creating content like this as well. Also, don't forget to give me a follow on GitHub. Now in Laravel, cache is a pretty important topic, even if you're not aware of it. Caching is the act of transparently storing data for future use in an attempt to make applications run faster. As a whole, you can definitely say that cache looks like sessions, and you can pretty much use them in the same exact way since you need to provide a key to store it. Now there are obviously differences between sessions and caches. Sessions are used to store data between page requests and cache is used to cache data per application. Therefore, you usually store stuff like database queries and API calls in your cache. Just like sessions, configurations of the cache are stored inside the convic folder right here, where you have a file called cache.php. If you scroll through the file, you'll see a lot of similarities in any other convic file. The most important one is actually at the top, which is the cache driver right here. If it isn't available, it will store it in a default driver called file. We're going to set the caching backends. Every situation might be different, so you can change up your cache driver. I'll switch screens real quick to my GitHub repository because I added the different cache drivers. The first one is the file driver, which is the default one. Now the file driver will basically be the default value if you don't specify under the driver. What this will do is creating a new encrypted file per cache in your storage folder. Today's video is brought to you by Cloudways, a managed hosting platform for your applications. Cloudways has enabled businesses to scale and reach new milestones instead of worrying about server hassles. With reliable 24-7 support, Cloudways offers complete peace of mind from server-level nightmares. Furthermore, its superior tools and works enhance your productivity so you can focus on creating incredible experiences with your applications. It's a fast-managed solution for agencies, SMBs, and e-commerce businesses. What I personally like about Cloudways is their slogan, moving dreams forward. Let's have a look at it. Let's go to Visual Studio Code, scroll to the bottom, open the storage folder, framework folder, where you will find a cache folder. Right here, you can see the data folder is empty at the moment, but once you store something inside your cache, it will be visible right here. Now, the most important question is probably, can I use this for development? Yes, you actually can. And it's even faster than adding your cache in the database. The second available driver is the array driver. This is simply a array where you will store your cache. There is an advantage right there because you don't need to configure a driver. The only thing you need to do is to change your cache driver to array in your .env file. Then we got a harder driver to set up, which is the database driver. What this will do is storing in memory for your current PHP process. You do need to create a database table and this can easily be done through Artisan by running the PHP Artisan cache table command. In my opinion, there is a downside of storing your cache in the database. The database driver can be overloaded when you get tons of caching on your site. Therefore, I honestly don't recommend using the cache driver in real life examples. It's pretty easy to set it. You just need to set your cache driver equal to database. Now then we got Redis and Memcached. And these are actually a bit more complex, but they are actually very cool to use. The Redis driver basically uses an in-memory based caching technology, while Memcache does exactly the same, but it requires a bit more server maintenance. Both of them can be used by setting the cache driver to either Redis or Memcached. All right, let's navigate back to the code editor because we're going to perform some caching stuff. Just like sessions, I usually prefer to access cache through the vacate. So let's perform that. Let's close off our caching configuration file and right inside of the index method, above our view, let's pull in the cache vacate. So let's pry down cache, pull in the illuminate support vacate, colon, colon, get. Next to the vacate, you can also call the cache global helper. To do that, you need to create a new variable, let's say test and set it equal to the cache method. And when you want to perform, let's say the get method, you just need to chain the get method to it. Now, this line right here is exactly the same as the line above. 
I prefer to use the vacate, so let me get rid of this line of code. We've already wrote down the get method right here, which is used to pull the value of a cache that came with a request. We've also got the pull method, which is essentially the same as the get method, but it removes the cache value after retrieving it. We can't use the get method at the moment because we haven't set a cache. So let's test it out. Let's add a DD right here and let's hit enter. Print out this line of code. We don't need the semicolon. Save it. Navigate to Brave. Open our local host and let me zoom in. Refresh the page. Now right here, you can see that it has too few arguments inside the get method. Whenever you want to get a cache, you need to provide a key. So let's say key user. Save it, go to Brave, refresh it right here. The value is null because we don't have a cache. Whenever you want to create a cache, you have to perform the put method. So first, let's navigate up. Right above our DD, let's say cache, colon, colon. Instead of get, perform the put method. The put method accepts three parameters, and two of them are actually required. The first one will be the key. So in single quotes, let's say cache key comma, single quotes, then we need to provide the value that is related to the key. So let's say this should be a cache key. And let's change our get method to cache key. Navigate to Brave, refresh the page. Right here, you can see that this should be a cache key has been printed out. This works fine, but a parameter is actually missing, since you need to set an expiration date as the third parameter. Now this can be done with an integer which will represent the amount of seconds. So right after a value, add a comma, and let's say 1000, which will be 1000 seconds. I personally prefer to use the carbon object, so let's change it up. Let's say now, change the method of add day. What this will do is save in your cache for 24 hours. If we save it and navigate to the browser, refresh it, you won't see anything different in the output, but it will all happen behind the scenes. After 24 hours, this cache will be deleted. Since we actually refreshed our page and our cache driver is equal to file, we should be able to see a new file inside the cache folder. If we navigate to Visual Studio Code, scroll down to the storage folder right here, we have a new folder with a random name of 65. Let's open it with a new file in here with an encrypted name. Let's open it. Right here, you can see a encrypted key, but the value is visible, which is this should be a cache key. Let's close it off. Let's continue on with the next method, which will be the add method. Right below our put method, let's define the cache vacate, colon, colon, add. Inside the add method, we do need to provide a key and a value. So let's say that the key is cache key again. And let's say that the value is key number two. If we save it, refresh the page, you can see that this should be a cache key is still printed out. And there's actually a reason for it. So if you try to add a new key with the add method that already exists, it won't set it. So key number two will not be set, but it will change it to cache key two and change the get method to cache key two, save it, refresh the page. You'll see that key number two has been printed out because cache key two, which is the key, does not exist inside our cache folder anymore. The next method is the forever method. And this is pretty much the same as the put method, but you're not passing through an expiration date because it will never expire. Therefore the name of forever. So let's remove everything after add. Let's call the forever method. And inside the forever method, we're basically going to pass in two parameters, which is the key and the value again. So let's say cache key two, and the value is key two. Save it, navigate to the browser, refresh it, key two has been printed out. And if we actually open the new AT3 file right here, you actually won't see anything different than the cache with an expiration date. But behind the scenes, it knows that it can't expire. Well, I've actually said it wrong, because there's one method that will make it disappear. If we go right below our forever method and say cache colon colon forget, 
we need to pass in a key, let's say cache key two, save it, navigate to the browser, refresh it. You'll see that the output is null, but if we navigate back to Visual Studio Code, and we open the, well, at least try to open the cache file, you'll see that the folder is empty. So it has indeed removed cache number two, even though the method has an unexpired date time. It literally deletes the cache from its stored location. Now at the moment, you'll see that we have one caching file left right here. So what we actually can do is to call the cache vacate, colon, colon, and call the flush method. Now the flush method does not accept a parameter because it basically will delete every available cache in our application. Save it, navigate to Brave, refresh the page. The output is still null. If we navigate to Visual Studio Code, you'll see that the data folder inside the cache folder has no caching files anymore. The next method that we can perform on a cache is one that I've used a couple times, but not really on a cache, but on a session. The has method will check whether there's a value set at the provided key. So we do need to get rid of our flush and forget. Right here, create an if statement where we're going to call the cache vacate, colon, colon, has. Inside the has method, we need to provide a key. Right now, cache2 does exist. Copy it, paste it in single quotes right here. Inside the if statement, let's add a dd of cache does exist, exist, excuse me. Save it, navigate to Brave, refresh it, and right here, you see that cache does exist. Now the next two methods are pretty useful because it lets you increase and decrease the value of an integer in a cache. First, let's get rid of our if statement. Then right below our forever method, create a new cache vacate, colon, colon, increment. It accepts two parameters. The first parameter will be the name of our cache. In our case, let's just call it cache key two again. It also accepts a second parameter, so comma, which will be the amount you want to increase your cache with. Let's pass in an integer of one. In a programming language such as C-sharp, this will actually give you an error. Now let me explain why. Inside the forever method that we have right here, we set that the value of cache key two should be a string of key two. Since PHP is a loosely typed programming language, it would treat the value as it was a zero. So we will basically replace the value with zero and increase it with the second parameter we passed inside the increment method. If we save it, navigate to the browser, refresh it, you can indeed see that the output is one right now. If we navigate back to Visual Studio Code and change the value of cache key two to four, save it, navigate to Brave, refresh it, you can see that the output is five. So we will add the four that we add inside the forever method with the one of the increment method, which will be five. Next to increasing a value, you can obviously decrease it as well. So to do that, we need to replace increment with decrement. Save it, navigate to Brave, refresh it, and the output is three. So let's focus on a real life example right now. I personally don't like storing cache in the database. So instead of doing that, I want to create a simple example where we store posts inside our cache. We need to make sure that we set up a post migration, model, and dummy data with a login and register interface. Let's first pull in the authentication scaffolding. Inside the CLI, let's perform the composer, require, Laravel dash UI. Then we're going to pull in view UI with a PHP artisan UI view, double dash, hot. And lastly, we need to perform npm install, double ampersand, npm run dev. All right, Webpack has been compiled successfully. I've already created my database. So if I open the .env file, I have a database called Laravel underscore cache and my password is dario 1234 Save it and close it off. Then we can run the php artisan migrate command. It has migrated all tables, so we can focus on the posts right now. So what do we need? We first need a model. So let's say php artisan make me a model called post. We need a factory, so a dash f. We need a migration, 
So M, and we need a resource controller, so R. Hit enter. And let's actually start off by setting up our migration correctly. Let's open the database folder inside the root or directory, migrations, and it's the last one. We do have an ID. Then we have a table string, which is the title. We have a table called long text, which will be the description. Then we have a table unsigned big integer which will be the user ID. Right below our column timestamps, let's create a table, which will be the foreign key that will refer to the user ID on the table. So it references to ID on the table, so on users. I've got a typo right here. I need to close it off, obviously. Save it. Let's run the PHP artisan migrate command. It has created the post table. So let's focus on our factory right now. Let's open the factories folder, post factory, scroll down. Inside the return method, we basically have three columns that we need to fill in. It is in single quotes, the user underscore ID, which will be a static one. Then we have the title, which will be grabbed from this faker sentence. That's a typo. Then we have the description as well, which we will wear from this faker paragraph. Save it and let's navigate to Brave because we need to create an account. Well, actually let's remove the DD that we have right here. Save it, navigate to Brave and refresh the page. Let's change our endpoints to forward slash register. Let's create a new account right here. So my name is code with Dari cwd at gmail.com. I have a secret password for you. Click on register. I am logged in right now. Now we can finally use PHP artisan tinker to run our factory. So in visual studio code, let me make the terminal a little bit bigger. Let's say PHP artisan tinker. In here, we need to make sure that we call the entire path of our model. So let's say app backslash models, backslash, post, colon, colon, factory. Now we're not going to add something inside the factory method, but we're going to chain the count method and we're going to add 1000 rows in our database. At the end, we need to chain the create method as well. If we hit enter, this might take a minute because it will create 1000 rows. Well, it actually did. I am not gonna score up because that will take a while. Let's write down exit. And what's next? We got to make sure that we have an event and listener set up because it will fetch data from Laravel cache. If the data does not exist in the cache, so basically the 1000 rows, it will fetch it from the database. This will make sure that 1000 rows will not be loaded every single time a user enters the post page, but it will only be cached once. We're all familiar with events and listeners. So let's perform the PHP artisan make colon event command called post created. Then we also need to create the listener. So let's say PHP artisan make me a listener called post cache listener. Hit enter. If we navigate to the app folder at the top and find the listeners folder that has been created for us with the post cache listener file, we have a construct and a handle method. We got to make sure that we remove the cache even when it hasn't been set. So let's pull in the cache vacate. Let's say colon colon forget. And the forget method accepts one parameter, which will be the post key. We haven't set it yet because we'll do it on the line below. So let's say cache colon colon forever. So create me a cache forever with a key of posts and the value will be grabbed from the post model. So let's say post colon colon all. Right now, we got to make sure that we hook our event into our model, which can be done with the property dispatches event inside the post model. So I actually haven't pulled in the post model. All right, that's better. Close the listener off, open the models folder, post.php, right below our use statement of has factory or a trait, excuse me, create a new protected property dispatches events 
which is equal to an array. Let's go inside the array and hit enter. The key will be created and the value is the event. So let's say post created, pull it in, colon colon class. Now the next common step is to register our event and listener. So let's navigate to the providers folder, open the event service provider, and write inside the protected property listen. We first need to make sure that we register the event here. So right below the register, so right here, let's say post created, which is the event, colon colon class. Let's add a access operator, brackets, Inside the brackets, we need to call the listener, which will be post cache listener, colon, colon, class. So what's next? Inside the index method of our post controller that we created, our resource controller, let's open it. We got to make sure that we first dispatch the event and then get all the posts and put it inside a cache. So let's do that. Let's say event, let's pull in the support vacates event, colon, colon, dispatch. Now what we're going to dispatch is a new event. So a new post created. Then on the line below, we're basically going to say, well, we have a variable posts, which is equal to the cache method. Inside the cache method, we got a key of posts, comma. We're not gonna send back a value, but a function. Inside the function, we're basically going to say, well, return me a post. Well, not one post, but all posts, so get. Outside of our post variable, we're basically going to return a view called block.index and we're going to pass in the variable posts. Now, before we can access the block.index page, we got to create the route inside the web.php file. Right at the bottom or right here, let's say route colon colon get. Inside the get method, we have an endpoint of forward slash block. Second param is a set of brackets, so an array of the post controller, colon, colon, class, comma, and the method will be index. So let's create our route or our view. So inside the views folder, create a new folder called blog with a new file of index.blade.php. Let's add a piece of text of your 1000 rows have been added in the cache. Save it. Let me actually close off all my files because it happens a lot that it doesn't work because I haven't saved it. Look, I haven't saved this file. All right. Let's navigate back to Brave, change the endpoint to forward slash blog. And right here, you can see that your 1000 rows have been added in the cache has been printed out. But the most important thing is the cache folder. So let's have a look and see if our cache has been added. Scroll down. We have a folder right here. Let's see. This is an old one. I think that this is an old one as well. 87 is a, do you want to open it anyway? Let's say text editor right here. You'll find a big JSON file which holds all of our posts. Now, whenever we refresh the endpoint again, you won't see a new folder because we are basically checking whether the cache file already exists or not. And it does. It will basically grab it all from the cache file whenever you refresh the blog page right now, which will save you a lot of rendering time. This was it for this video where I showed you how caching works in Laravel. And I've also showed you how you can store 1000 rows of your database in your cache, which will save you a lot of rendering time. For now, this was it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.